gifted with the Divine Mother's strength, courage and wisdom, women throughout the ages stand out as beacons of light guiding society. And South Africa's own Brenda Kali is no exception. Despite tremendous personal challenges, Brenda has played a pivotal role as a broadcast executive and a communication strategist, most especially in the crucial years post-apartheid. She is also an author of note and corporate guru too. Sadna caught up with her away from the glitz, the glamour and the gusto of the heady business world in her own space of peace, charm and serenity. Communication has always been my passion. It was natural for me to just fall into the communication industry. Uh, I started off as a journalist at the Star, and then when, I, to what I consider the golden years of broadcasting between 94 and 2000, because it was then that we made the biggest difference in change. We really made programs that won international awards, and we've made programs that really reflected where, what we were all about, the values, and this incredible brain donation that we were. When I was growing up, I couldn't verbalize, I couldn't communicate, especially when I was angry. So I used to sit and write, I used to journal a lot. And so, because my father was so fundamental, and he was, he was really authoritarian, you couldn't talk to him or backchat with him. The frustration, that I felt I used to put down on paper. And that's where it really came about. And my very first book, Kismet, uh, was a scenario where I wanted the dynamic of South Africa somehow to be imbibed into the, in the text, as well as the philosophy of Buddhism or the philosophy of Hinduism in India and the rich, colorful background and the way of life and the value system to come through. And, and amazingly enough, uh, the moment it was launched, a thousand copies were sold in one week because I was the first Indian author at that time, 1983. I did The Legends of Ancient India also in the 80s for children. What I attempted to do was to take these incredible works of the great poets of Valmiki and the saints and sages of the forest and simplify it for children. When my children were growing up, because we were living in a very Western environment, I wanted them still to have that grounding of, for example, why we celebrate Diwali, the festival of lights, the story of Buddha, the story of Krishna. And so I sat down and wrote the stories, and they were published. It, it brought to South Africa at large uh, the rich, colorful storehouse of, of legends that we have in the community, and, and also the incredible values that the Hinduism has. My very major, major turning point is, is my beautiful daughter. She was 21 years old, she was a second year law student, she had everything at her feet. And then she had an accident which left her in a coma for 10 months. And that became a huge lesson. But I often tell her pain is a tool that sharpens you. I must say that accident, as tragic as it was, was my greatest gift because it taught me so much. It taught me, and I literally saw grace in action. I literally saw miracles work. The doctor said, take her home. If she will die in two months' time, her organs will fail. And 17 or 16 years later, my child is sitting in a wheelchair. She paints, she cooks. She is just so functional, and she's such an incredible human being. It is a privilege to be working in broadcast because you have the capacity to change the lives and minds of millions of people and to transform and create a value system, especially with children as well. When they watch TV, I mean, it becomes a babysitter. When you actually watch TV, you kind of learn. There's so much learning that happens. country of Nelson Mandela, we had an absolutely incredible nation.
that walk through fire to get where we are. Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. So if each one of us is compassionate and loving and noble and living our values, every one of us has that kind of consciousness and we do that, can you imagine what a beautiful society we'll be? As quoted by Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, life springs from love. The origin is love and life seeks love. The goal of life is also love and in between, life is sustained by love. So let's also spread this divine love all around us and in our own way, help heal Africa and help heal the world. Until next week, keep up your sadhana. Om Shanti.